start it in a minute. Find the street. people coming back all right sorry everyone lately my studio has become a giant piece of shit or like many in the comments pointed out the excise and license chick is here <laughs> uh yeah welcome back sorry i don't know where i officially left off you can remind me but i know i was talking about this controller um but yeah i like this controller so i don't know what i said that you heard and what i said that you didn't but I, if it's a repeat of this, I promise I like this controller. Um, it allows you to do all kinds of cool shit. Dose your reservoir. I'll keep it short and sweet because I don't know. But if, uh, yeah, you guys don't know about these controllers and you missed what I just said on my little rant, um, yeah, you should check them out. Once again, yeah, I did. I said they're a lot of money. Yeah, they are. These are expensive. These are probably not for the average home grower, but if you have the means, these are pretty cool, these dosers, these automatic dosers. I've always had a, like a dream of having a facility that like automatically dosed the nutrients. I mean, I know this is, you know, there's fucking, what are those click clacker things called? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The click clacker feed things that everyone has. Flo not floor flex, God, what am I? Dosatron. Everyone has a dosatron like set up. It's a similar concept to a dosatron, but this one is a little bit more precise, I feel like. But yeah. <laughs> Timber bad controller, good. You guys got the gist. Okay. If you didn't have the liquid nutrient machine with seven bottles, yeah, it's that that's the thing. It the more bottles you have, the more expensive this system becomes. So uh if you can kind of utilize like a salt mix into like a concentrate, then it work, works really well. Um, but yeah, it, this can get pricey, but it, and it also, like I said, can get maddening because there's times when I just like, my reservoir is locked out. And I'm like, why is this fucking doing this? What, what's happening? But almost every time it's not the controller, it's something else going on that something else is fucked up. But yeah, um, I don't know. The Pro Controller, it's really cool. I'm gonna move on to the next item on my list because none of you guys heard me talk about it. I went like two, three more items on the list, so <laughs> I got to repeat this shit. Next item on the list. Welcome back. People are trickling back in. Sorry, technical difficulties. Grower's Choice. Grower's Choice Light. Um, Grower's Choice, full disclosure, used to sponsor this podcast. I'm, they, I mean, we're, they're just still friends with us. We, I'm not really sure if they're officially sponsoring us right now. But um, yeah, we use this light and they sponsored us with this light, but that's not why it's on the top 12 for me. I really like this light when paired with controllers, the ability to dial things into certain like percentages of light, like it's bright as shit in there. So um, yeah, you're able to like turn it down to like 20% when you're in there working so you don't strain your eyes. And then as you leave, you just go to the controller and dial it back up. I mentioned on this one, this has a learning curve a little bit. Um, I learned over a period of time that I like to use this light backed off the canopy a bit, um, kind of more like a Gavita where it's a little bit higher off the canopy than what most people are used to. Cause I initially, cause the light puts out so little heat, I wanted to put it right on top of the canopy and just put my hand there and wait for the heat, but the heat doesn't really come with this light. So I had it too close to the canopy many times and I think I angered my plants and I ran like that for a while. Once I backed these lights up a little bit, but I also, full disclosure, run my lights at, you know, 110 strength. I like super juice them. 
So, um, but they're up, they're backed off the canopy a little ways. But the the key on this would be to just check your par. Um, but even still, I find that I we are growing better with these with these lights backed off a little bit, which is a learning curve for me. But I really do like these lights, and more so the controllers and the ability to dial things into percentages of light come in and basically take them down to nothing to spray, turn them back up. You can do the whole daylight dust till dawn kind of thing with it if you really want. But uh, yeah, I, I I didn't think I'd ever really become a proponent of LEDs, but this is a really cool light that I would continue to use. I like it. I think it's kind of the best 720 water on the market for uh, LEDs. And there's a million LEDs. That's kind of a bold statement. But yeah, I do like this light. That's kind of all I can say over and over again. Next on the list, once again, in no particular order, this one I laugh about, but um, this is the opposite of a Blue Lab controller that I just went on and on about how technical and cool and precise that thing can kind of be. Um, it's funny to me because when I think about these drops, I literally have used these drops for over 20 years as a double checker. So like I will, I will still use these to this day in my commercial facilities and my home grows. I use these drops all the time just to double check shit, check runoff sometimes just to check um, the reservoirs, double check that the, the readouts are right. If we calibrate stuff, even every once in a while, I'll go in and I'll use this. But if you don't know what it is, it's a little vial on the on the right, and uh, that vial is where you would like scoop a little bit of your water, and then you add two to three drops of this little solution from General Hydroponics, and the color will change. And I feel like everyone out there probably knows this product and they also have like a color that is their color and that they they like know that color my color is kind of orange they say like orange is like five seven five 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 seven and then like orange to like light yellow where it's like six two but i like my i like my drops to kind of show me just a hint of like orange in there but a lot of people like them light blue even light green um but yeah everyone has their color in these drops super cheap at every hydro store in the world General Hydroponics has been making this for like 50 years. Uh, it's the simplest product, but it totally belongs on my top 12 because still to this day, when I think about products that I'm like, I use this shit all the time. I use it all the time. It's not my number one go-to, but it's something that even though I have fancy electronics or whatever the fuck going on in a commercial facility, nine times out of 10, I'm standing there with one of these things, shaking it up, looking at the color, being like, okay, we're good. Like, it's funny to me, not that... I don't trust the stuff, but I trust this because I've been using it for so fucking long. Um, but yeah, if you're not familiar with this, yeah, a couple of drops of this kind of will tell you where you're at. And um, very simple way if you're a home grower to pH your water and do your little tents or do you know windowsill plants or whatever it is, pH matters, and uh, you should be checking it. Like I say, and this is a very simple, cheap, easy way to do that. But I use it all the fucking time. I swear this is. Something that is literally always around me. <laughs> I learned this one from Daz, but um, yeah, this is just a paint mixer. Really, it should be all plastic. Try to avoid a steel handle or a stainless steel handle if you can, but um, it's just a paint mixer, so you need a drill for this. But again, these are simple items. Maybe the title of the show should be the 12 simplest items I use, but this is a simple item, but this changed the game for me too. I didn't use one of these for... 19 years and on year like 20 i was like watching daz mix some shit up and use his drill and fucking and i was like why the fuck don't i do that like i usually have like a bamboo stick a pvc pole a wood fucking stick and i'm in there fucking churning and churning and churning then i'll stop and go the other direction and churn against that and then zigzag it and then like i've mixed so much water in my life and now <laughs> that i have one of these it's just the shit. It's just like, think smarter, not harder. And um, if you have the ability to grab a paint mixer that you can use for mixing your reservoir, I promise you, you'll laugh and be like, well, that was easy. Um, yeah, use a paint mixer. Forward, reverse, slish, slosh, all good. But uh, yeah, I again, a product I didn't use for 19 years, year 20 roughly, I used it, and I'm like gobsmacked. I'm like, why the fuck haven't I been using this all the time? The one thing I would say is try to avoid steel or stainless steel is because you don't want to leave it sitting in your reservoir. The steel can actually fuck with your EC 
And um, yeah, it's just, if you can find an all plastic version of this, it's what you want. Um, you can use it if it has like a metal handle like this. You just, the main thing, don't leave it in your reservoir. If you leave metal in your reservoir, it will change things on you. All right, moving on. Simple, right? <laughs> this one. This is an opportunity for me to take a shit on something and say how much I like these. So, Active Aqua Trays. Um, I think that's their logo. I tried to Google it. I'm pretty sure that's their logo. But Active Aqua Trays, everybody knows a grow tray, right? This is probably a 4x8 stack of them. But I have been through so many fucking trays in my life. I'm not joking. I've tried every kind of tray that there ever was. And here's my chance to say the Botanica Trays suck ass. I've had so many Botanica trays over my lifetime. It's the go-to. I think that most people go get a Botanica tray. And um, I will say this. For years, Botanica made the best tray. Like, it was thick, plastic, heavy, like, su super sturdy. I have some that are probably, like, 15 years old that we use to mix soil in. They're little 4 by 4s and we slap them on a table and dump in dirt, and we'll mix our dirt all up, and we just use it as a giant mixing station. But these things are 20, 15 to 20 fucking years old, thick as shit, no cracks, no problems, no nothing. Then, I don't know exactly the date, I suspect, when Hawthorne bought them, but they, they switched their production to this cheaper, flimsy plastic that I fucking hate. And I have blown holes in so many trays with just the simplest pressure washer at 1500 PSI, not even going crazy, and just, just blow a hole right through the fucking thing. And you're like, are you shitting me right now? But worse than that, I have trays that have only made it one or two runs from Botanicare recently, sitting on plywood on a level surface. And then you go to look at them, and there's fucking cracks running down all of them. All of the little cavities that they put on the edges, they'll blow straight out if you put a pressure washer. I have brand new trays for them that just blow out holes in them. Like, shitty as hell. So my point is... Active Aqua Trays, which I've also purchased recently, use a much better material. A much better material. It's so much thicker it, and more flexible in a way. And they don't chip. They don't crack. I've had them for, I've had some of these for years now. And I can pressure wash the hell out of them. And they take it. They hold up better. I just, I'm amazed at the difference in quality between Active Aqua's Trays in hydro or not hydrologic botanicare's trays botanicare's trays are complete like kids shit like it's like a toy it's like you're gonna break it if you handle it too much when i talk about on the show like industrial use a botanicare tray cannot hold up to industrial use for shit a active aqua is holding up really well really well now there's certain botanicare trays that are genius they have the palarac trays so that you can have a gutter basically in the front and we'll end it up on a pallet rack nobody else is making that but i bought 28 30 of those they're all fucking leaking they're all cracked and leaking and fucking dripping on the plants below them it's like why make a pallet rack tray if you know it's going to be a piece of shit that's going to drip on the shit underneath it the whole design is to have stacked plants right well your trays can't leak dude like they're garbage just hear hear me now they're garbage i active aqua trays are rock solid right now and if i was going to spend the money on trays i would definitely choose active aqua over anything i've seen lately um but yeah that's my rant on fucking trays is different like you think a tray is a tray i assure you it's not this one this is a horrible picture but this is an ion clone strip i think they're 36 watts or 32 watts um they're like 50 bucks. You can daisy chain like 32 of them together. But um, we used to use these little T5s or even floral bulbs. We'd get like eight-foot floral bulbs from Home Depot and clone under those and get a cool blue. That's how we started. And then we moved to T5s, and we'd use the blue T5s and kind of get the four strippers and run the four strip T5s to clone under and try to get them on racks or trays or build some sort of wood structure to hold it all and like build these – like. I don't know, like over designed things to hold these lights to have a tray, a clone setup, a clone room. But as of recently, we've, once again, LEDs, but these ion lights, which I think are only at Grogen, maybe not, but these ion lights are like cheap as shit, bright as hell, 
light as hell, come with little clips so you can zip tie them. And, but more than anything, you can daisy chain 32 of them together on one 215, or I'm sorry, a 115 outlet or 110 outlet. So, uh, it, it gives you a lot of versatility to build cloning areas, pre veg areas, small areas, like not a lot of light, but the plants clone really well under these. And this is another product that I was just like, you know, once we made the switch to this, like it is so much better than everything we've ever used before. Because I think of how we cloned in the past, and it was like, like I say, it was T8 fluoro bulbs or like shop lights <laughs> to T5s to now these clone strips. And they're really affordable. And the fact that they kind of all just connect, um, yeah. I think you could probably get away with using these in veg if you, if you put enough of them together. Um, I don't know. It might be cheaper just to get yourself a decent veg light. But I, there's weird circumstances where you kind of want to add some light to certain spots. So throw one of these strips up, you'd be pretty impressed. I was impressed with them. And more than anything, the cloning is working really well. The clones are responding really well under these lights. So ion clone strips, um, clone little, I don't know exactly their official title, but clone lights, um, rack lighting, really nice. I really like these lights um, and cheap as hell. It's cool to be able to go in and grab a, you know, fill the whole rack of clones for like two lights per shelf and maybe three, four shelves on a rolling wire rack tray kind of thing. That's how I like to do it with these. And I don't know, you may be in it for $200 or roughly for a whole, whole setup on that. And you can clone hundreds of clones on one of those racks, hundreds. So, um, yeah, a really cheap, efficient way to do cloning. I think we might be towards the end. <clears throat> no, there's a couple more. The Easy Cloner. JLo's probably pissed sitting next to me here. But um, the Easy Cloner, over the course of my lifetime, when I think about cloning a lot and having a truly a good success with it, um, the Easy Cloner is, it's got to go in the Hall of Fame of like best products. They didn't invent aeroponic cloning. It's not there's nothing crazy about this in truth it's incredibly overpriced piece of plastic with a simple hydro pump and a manifold that sprays out a mist of water so they're they're making some good change on these bad boys but these things if you want to mass produce clones like they they can do it for you um <laughs> you can actually stuff two to three clones per collar sometimes so if you have like a 35 site or a whatever 64 site it can turn it into whatever, uh, 184 side or some shit like that by adding three clones per collar. So they're cool. Granted, these are expensive and you don't need to buy this exact thing. There's a million DIYs on the internet that show you how to make your own cloner at home. A lot of them, I've made a ton of them. A lot of them work. Um, I mean, most of them work if you build it right, but you gotta be a little crafty. You're dealing with water. You gotta drill holes in spots, add grommets, like, it's a little bit, a little bit of a good DIYer, but um, I again, if you have the means to grab one of these, and you're trying to do a lot of clones, like this works really fucking well, and it's been utilized commercially all over the place. But I will say, there's been a shift away from these things, Dark Horse included. We no longer use them because of the dreaded HLVD that's out there. Um, it, you know you don't want to mix clones in one of these if you have a garden now because it's like you don't necessarily know if you're infected in one of your plants you throw this in the machine all your plants are infected and then as you move forward you fucked yourself so unless you're certain your hlvd clean then i wouldn't use one of these um or maybe if you're a smaller hobby guy that like i say just wants to propagate like 24 clones every few weeks and kind of run your same thing over and over again like that i can see that working i will say on these easy cloners the smaller the unit the harder it is to get your water not to heat up i like the big 120 sites the best when you start getting into the smaller ones the pump will actually heat the water in the in the basin of the machine and when your water gets hot your roots will get slimy and brown and gross so to combat that, most people use a timer on their easy cloners so that they'll cycle it on and off. There's a million answers for how what you do. I've heard of like on for 
30 seconds off for like two minutes. I've heard it like on for one minute, off for seven. I've, like I can't even recall what I have mine set. I have it written down, but yeah, there's a million different concoctions of ways and experts that'll tell you how to set your timer on your machine. But what we're trying to do is accomplish the water not getting too hot, but yet still circulating that water through to spray the roots. Um, there's a fine line with some of these when you dial them in. Harder to run in a hot room, harder to run in the summer. But if you have a cool, dark basement and it stays relatively the same temperature, your water doesn't get too hot in these. Um, yeah, there's other tricks. People will throw ice cubes in here and shit and stuff like that. Like, it'll work, but I remember back in the days of commercial facilities before I was new a whole lot, like, there'd be rows and rows of these things going, and it'd be hot as fuck in the warehouse, and people would come in, and we'd have, like, like frozen milk jugs of ice, and you'd, like, sl like cut them off and, like, slide them in or, like, just throw water bottles, frozen water bottles in these, like, every day. Just come in and just like take them out of the freezer and throw them in, trying to keep that temperature down. People have plumbed these with chillers in the past where they actually have like a recirculating system through like six or seven of them through a chiller and then back through. We've done that. So um, really useful tool. Again, I think it belongs in the Hall of Fame. Not necessarily easy clone the company, but the concept of aeroponic cloning, it, it works really well, although it's kind of frowned upon in the age of HLVD. Moving on. This one's funny, and I just discovered it. Orange Lightning Gloves. So I got these at MJ BizCon, and, um, dude, I love them. I love them. They are, like, thicker than the shitty gloves that everyone gets. You're all used to a million, glo like, Black Lightning Gloves, and it's the same company, but this is Orange Lightning. But um, these have these little dimples in, on the fingers, and they're so much thicker plastic, or vinyl, I should say, and when you strap them on, like, I don't. I've blown out gloves, so many gloves, and I just pull them on and just just rip them apart. I, I have. A, I'm a large-handed man, so like I I go through gloves like crazy. I the shittier the glove, the like less time, the least amount of time I'll wear it. Like I don't wear sh sh the glove. I, what am I trying to say? The ones that are shitty, literally like my fingers poke through them, rip, tear, or whatever. I'm wearing them for like five minutes and I'm changing out to a new one. I'm going through so many gloves on the shitty gloves. But if you get these orange gloves, which I just discovered, I use the same pair of gloves half the day. And then like, they're thick. They feel almost like dishwashing glove material, but at the same time, like thicker um, with these little ripples on them. I don't know. For people that wear gloves a lot in the commercial world or whatever it may be, I've worn a lot of gloves my entire life, and I've never really thought too much about it. And then I put these gloves on, and I was like, holy shit, I love these gloves. That's what this podcast is supposed to be about, is like those, the products that I was like, well, these are way fucking better. Well, these orange gloves are way fucking better. If you're a glove person that has to wear gloves all the time, ask your boss to buy these gloves, because I'm telling you, you'll like them. And once again, I'm, they're not giving me a dollar. Send me more of these orange glove people, black lightning people, because I love them, and I will pump them out for you. Serious, I love these gloves. Yeah, they can be used for all kinds of things, too, for whatever, different fields. It's kind of crazy. One of them says something like fentanyl, something about fentanyl, because the cops use them. So, like, I, yeah, I don't know. I was shocked reading the back of the uses for the gloves. I was like, fentanyl safe. I was like, what the fuck is this? But it's for the cops. Okay. Cops use the same gloves as we do. Hydrologic Tallboy. Tallboy, this is another famous product that I'm sure many people know about. But a Tallboy is something that I think most people should have in their grow. Even small grows, home grows, they got a small boy, I think is what they call it. I've never used one of those, but a smaller version than this. So if you have a really small little grow. But this Tallboy, I think, is what you need almost in every circumstance. Um, if you don't really understand water and the effect of water on your plants and you're kind of just using tap water, you're making a big mistake. You really should look into water a little bit more and understand like dechlorination, dechlor dechlorination, I think that's a word, removing your chlorine, um, RO system basically. So your, your water coming out of your tap is probably somewhere between 200 to 600 ppm anyway. So when you use an RO system, you can kind of remove all of that, remove all the sediment, all the chlorine, and get to a really like a zero, zero water. And um, that's, a, that's where you want to start. If you're having issues and you don't understand why you're having issues, I would say 
probably need an RO system in line. Um, you can plug these in, like screw them right into your sink, mount them on the wall, and then fill your bucket with the other side or and put them in, or you can put them in line in like irrigation system type things. So if you don't know what a tall boy is, you've never heard of that, you should ask somebody or do a little research because this one is another Hall of Fame product. I just feel like if there was a Hall of Fame of grow products, the tall boy would be in it. It doesn't necessarily have to be Hydrologic's tall boy, but there's a million different RO systems out there. You can get one on Amazon, I'm sure. But if you want to use what I use, I buy these. Um, like I, I buy the Hydrologic ones. So, um, yeah, there you change out the sediment cartridges, or I'm not sure what you'd call it, but unscrew it and change them out. Um, it's not expensive once you get it. They're a little bit, maybe a little bit heavier price tag to get initially. I'm not sure. I'm talking up out of my ass, but a couple hundred dollars, maybe two to three hundred dollars for one of these. Somebody in chat will probably tell me. But um, yeah, they're not super expensive, but they're worth every penny in the end. Particularly if you don't have great water supply, or you're not really sure why you're getting weird things happening. You start if you're using the same shit, but you start seeing like weird, like sort of rust-colored things at the inner nodes or the inner part of your leaf. Or the edges of your leaf, um, I would, and you didn't change shit. I would look for at an RO system, and that would be kind of my go-to for that. But yes, it is worth it. Um, get a tall boy. If you don't know what tall boy is, get a tall boy. All right. The last item on my list. It's a relatively new item. So it's three hundred dollars for the Hydrologic, three hundred three hundred gal per day, which is what yours costs. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, but yeah, the um, the Grower's Choice, Grower's Choice soil. This is a um, I'm not sure if it's cultivate only product. I'm not sure how far and wide this goes around America, but I started getting this in cult at Cultivate, the place we're doing this um, event on Saturday. I started getting this this um, cocoa. They sent it to us uh, a whole pallet for free. And I started using it just to see how I'd like it because we used can of cocoa before. And <laughs> once I used this, I was just like, you know, I like this a little bit better. It beats the price tag a little bit better. It's nice and fluffy. I don't have to break it up a bunch. It doesn't have funky smells. And um, once we started using this dirt, or I shouldn't say dirt, this cocoa, uh, I, I just started seeing a, a marked change in some of the issues that we were having. Uh, so yeah, I, I like this cocoa. Um, I never thought I'd be on here talking about cocoa. I'm actually kind of allergic to cocoa, specifically the husk makes me like break out in hives if I if I touch it too much. So whenever I transplant, I wear gloves and I use this cocoa, but I've never broken out in hives using this cocoa or really the canna cocoa. But this is just a little bit cheaper option than canna, and I think it works just as well. And uh, I like this product. Like I say, it, it comes out of the bag easier. So for people that know like the bales of dirt, like Sunshine 4 Pro Mix, when it's compressed bale, there's a significant amount of time that's spent like breaking up those clunks of dirt with your hands. Like you're in there like kneading dough almost. You're just in there just breaking up balls of dirt and all the other stuff. And sometimes you even have to do that in some of the cocos. So um, this particular product I've started to really like a lot. So it kind of makes my top 12 right now because... I've gotten away from doing my organic dirt, not entirely. We still, I still grow organic dirt, but in our commercial facility, I switched to this from for heavy metal issues that we experienced last year, which I've talked about on the show, but we switched to this. And um, I didn't really think that I was going to be a fan, but here I am as the last product of my top 12. And I think this is a, you know, it's a good medium to use, especially when you think of cocoa, you're, you know, you get to play God with this. You're, it's zero, zero, zero. So you start with nothing, and then you add what you want, whatever nutrient you want to want to go with. It's soilless growing, and it's a little bit more effective when combating things like fungus gnats. Um, but it, even still, a Rockwell cube would be even better if you're having that particular issue over and over again, growing in a big six-inch six inch cube, which you wouldn't think it, but a six-inch cube can sustain a tomato plant through its entire life. And... Uh, similar to cannabis in a way. So people think a six inch cube is not near big enough medium to grow a plant, but you can stack a shit ton of them in there. And uh, I've seen a lot of grows that are just six inch rock wool cubes on a slab. And I'm like, damn, these it's fucking crushing, like crushing. So 
Yeah, I've been converted in many ways, but one of the ways is I, I use this fucking cocoa all the time now. So um, there's a product that I use. It's kind of crazy to me. But yeah, Growers, I think it's just called Growers. Growers Organic Cocoa. I get it at Cultivate. It's a Chip Baker product who I think at one time owned Cultivate. But I think he's on his own now doing these soils. Um, he owned a Tuper, maybe even Royal Gold. I can't remember. But um, anyway, I'm rambling. I like this cocoa. Go ahead and check it out. That concludes my top 12 products of all time for me. Um, it's kind of, like I say, I could probably redo this list 100 times over. But as I sat down and thought about the things that I'm like, man, we really use these all the time. Or these are the things that I'm always reaching for. Or these are the things that are always in my life. Or the smallest things that I've done to change that made the most significant changes for me. So, um, yeah, enjoy those products. If you don't know about those products, you may want to look them up once again. Not a paid deal. I just like all those products. So, um, yeah, there's my honest opinion. All right, before I get out of here tonight, I apologize for the stream crash in the middle. We'll see how this patches together. But uh, before I get out of here tonight, I want to shout out Dutch, our singular sponsor of this program right now. If I can find his thing. Damn, I can't. There it is. Um... Yeah, everybody go follow Dutch. It's been a weird time with this whole eclipse going down and everything around it and the predictions of massive, massive earthquakes and all of this kind of far-fetched nonsense. But I was laughing because like, I was seeing these conspiracy guys post like, like the end of the world is coming and it'll be in the form of like all these huge earthquakes and it's happening around the solar eclipse two weeks from the date. And I was just like, if anyone's going to know that, I'm going to call my guy Dutch. Dutch will tell me what's up. Dutch, <laughs> Dutch actually has remarkable accuracy in predicting earthquakes. Dutch is an avid cannabis grower, hobbyist breeder, biggest seed collector I've ever seen in my life. The dude has, I thought I had a collection. Dutch has a collection. So he's one of us. Um, he's a good dude. He has a radio voice that will soothe you to sleep if you need some ASMR type action. But uh, he's usually live on Twitch 24-7. He's got a YouTube channel that's massive, way bigger than this channel. It's kind of funny he sponsors this channel. But, um, yeah, shout out Dutch. Give him a follow. He really wants you to be safe. And if you're into any kind of conspiracy stuff, if you're into knowing where potentially the next big earthquakes are going to come, he remarkably is remarkably accurate in telling you where it's going to be. So much so that he has trouble with the alphabet people of the – the meaning the FBI, CIA, all them fucking alphabet people. And uh, somehow they like trying to keep this man off the internet and keep his information away. So it's in your best interest for everyone to follow Dutch for his safety. The bigger he is, the safer he is. I'm telling you, they're onto the man for some fucking reason. But yeah, he's also all about teaching you about bug out bags and like having all the stuff you need in the event of shit going down. Do you have what you need? Dutch will teach you. Plus he's got cool content about like fucking bases appearing and disappearing in the middle of the ocean and all kinds of shit. He maps the earth, man, and he knows what's going on. Dutch knows what's going on, man. That's all I'm saying. All right, everybody, we're going to get out of here tonight. Sorry for the ram shank shankle of a show. Um, we'll be back next week. Like I said, Saturday we'll be at Cultivate. So come down and check us out at Cultivate 12 to 3. Anyone who's subscribed to this show will get free seeds if you show me you're subscribed to this show. Um, so hit that sub button. Hit that like button. I never say that shit, but sub and like. And it pays off for you. And when we come to your town and do an event, we'll give you free beans. And, um, yeah, same bat time next week, same bat channel. Uh, we will have some 420 specials coming up. I don't officially know what they're going to be. It looks like we're going to be at Rocky Road on 420. I don't know the official time frame, but everybody in Denver will probably be doing free seeds again on 420 at Rocky Road. Uh, it'll probably be raffle or something along those lines to win. But, yeah, we'll be hanging out at Rocky Road on 420, the big celebration Super Bowl of weed. Um, for a certain time slot. I just don't know what time slot we've been allotted yet. But uh, yeah, 420 there. April 13th, uh, Cultivate. And next Wednesday, same bad time, same bad channel. Once again, thanks for watching the show, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, sorry for uh, missing a few weeks here. But um, yeah, I appreciate all you guys. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right, everybody. Peace. Little boy with gay fish come sit on my shoulder today. Little gay parrot fish sit on my shoulder today and make me a fried shrimpy dish.
with some soy sauce. Super fried egg roll, triple fried fried rice, triple fried rice, baby. Two for one egg roll, super triple fried rice, triple fried rice, baby. Don't forget the soy sauce. Cha cha cha. This is my gay fish song, dudes. What? <laughs>